Hello everybody and welcome back to the series where we're building out this front end mentor layout and yeah we might as well just dive right into it. I'm assuming you've seen the other parts of this uh, as we've been working on it and this is where we are now. If you haven't seen those parts I've linked to the full playlist down below if you want to catch up or if you want to continue from where we are now there's also a link to the github repo that we're starting from in this video. I was originally planning for this video to cover both the this call to action thing here and the footer that we have there. Uh, but it actually turned out to be pretty, a lot more going on here than at first meets the eye. It's not complex, but it took a little bit longer than planned. So this will be today's video. And then we'll look at the footer in the next video that comes after this one. And just a little bit of house cleaning before we get into that. A few people have mentioned um, things that I missed in previous videos. So one of them is with the mobile version. I, I never changed the, this to like the X. So definitely uh, is something. And uh, someone else had mentioned that the link here, oh, look at that, we have a problem. I've also have this problem that I didn't notice before where it, we can see through our navig, that's weird. I don't even know what's causing that, but one of the, the opacity difference might be at play. So we'll fix things like that uh, and a few other things at a later date. But the one thing I will say is I didn't make a mistake necessarily. Let's go over to Figma with the mobile version. Um, this isn't actually pushing everything down. It's that the image should actually be on top. So we'll have one episode later on once we sort of have most of the things in place that's more about housekeeping and house cleaning and all of that. Uh, but yeah, for now, we're going to focus more on the footer area, uh, making sure that actually it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, except the order of things is a little different, but we can look at that. Um, and then we'll come back to another episode where we'll look at these guys over here with the numbers. And then eventually we'll get down and do the slider over here closer to the end. Um, so if you are starting and following along with me right now, what we can do is just open up. And if you did download the uh, from the GitHub repo, you just want to do an NPM. Uh, let's make this a little bit bigger for you guys. I haven't been, it's been like, almost three weeks since I've did all the other parts. So I might be a little rusty with this um, and trying to remember some of my class names and stuff. So npm run dev, uh, which looks really weird. So let's just do a clear first npm run dev. There we go. Uh, not an npm run dev. And see, I'm rusty. npm install. And then once the npm install is done, then we can do our npm run dev. Great, so that's done. Now we can do my npm run dev right there. And now we can actually get going and start um, building things out from here. So yeah, anyway, we're ready to rock and roll so we can open up my index. I don't know, we'll, we'll be checking class names for sure. Open up my CSS. Um, and then we can close the sidebar and close this and get going. So let's go back to Figma and take a look at it. And the big difference right now, obviously down here, we have a background image coming in with these shapes um, that are there, which we also have here and I haven't done those. So again, some house cleaning stuff that will have to be done. So maybe these are background images though, for sure, instead of pseudos. Hmm, good question, are they? Uh, and what happens at mobile, we still, okay, mm, we'll see. Uh, on that actually the best way and then down here is probably the more interesting one where we have a little bit more that will have to be done Let us um, Get started with this. Yeah, so we'll go down and let's just get a refresher on how we named that. There's my footer So here we have my call to action is what I called it. We have the padding block on there, which is probably a bit too small uh, and if you remember, we did create some utility classes and we didn't go all in with them. Um, some people have said they don't really like the approach I did with my utility classes, which is fine. If you don't like the way I'm doing it, there's nothing wrong with um, approaching it a different way. So we'll, we have a padding block 900 that we'll use instead that should uh, give us a little bit more of that space that we want. And like I usually do, we'll move this down just so we can see what we're actually working on. And then we can keep this on the screen, just moving that up because uh, it's always good to see what you're actually doing. Um, so here we have my CTA, then we have my container, then we have these even columns here. And what's really doing most of this is this even columns is creating a column for each of them. The only thing is this button, we actually want it to be all the way on the side there. Uh, right, we, we need it, we need it to be all the way over here instead of where it is. And there's different ways that we can do this. We can do this with Flexbox, we can do this with other things. But what I'm actually going to do is here with this class, uh, I'm going to put a pipe because again, I separate my component classes from my utility classes. And I'm just going to do a push right because honestly, the easiest way to do anything like this, and 
watch it's not going to work um, but the easiest way to do anything like that um, so let's come into my utility classes which we were just where container we'll do it after my container we'll do a push right which gets a margin left of auto and it doesn't move <laughs> I said it might not work so let's go and see why it's not working uh, I did save my HTML because that's often something that doesn't, it, it, it's the culprit often that I do. Uh, margin left of auto. Oh, huh. let's go back and look at my button. Uh, button, whoops. Uh, so I'm just going to do a control F to find and look for my button uh, classes. Um, and I did it as an inline flex and often buttons as inline flex, this is a good thing. But the problem is because it's inline flex, the display on it um, is not going to let me do that. <laughs> it's not going to let me push it right because it's an inline element. If I just change this to be flex for fun, just so you can see, now you can see it's actually moved on all the way over to the right. Uh, and this does raise a little bit of an issue um, in that, do we want it? I, I did it as an inline flex, not that we needed it in this project because there's no icons inside of our buttons. I said, if ever there are, <laughs> this is the easiest thing to do uh, for when you're doing your buttons. It's always having an inline flex because then flex, it makes your columns in there. You have your icon, things go next to each other. It's very easy to do. You can throw a gap on there to add your spacing and all of that. Um, so in this case, obviously that doesn't work. So there's a few different options we have. One of them is we could make push right actually force a display block or something like that. Now, another option that we could do here would involve change, like we have even columns and then I could change my spacing on those columns um, because this is a grid and because the push right can't work on the button itself, what we could do, um, I sort of wanted to avoid doing this, but we're on a grid. So I think what I'll do is here, class equals um, justify self end. This wouldn't work if this was Flexbox, because with Flexbox, you can't do justify self on items. Um, but with grid, you can. I'm thinking. <laughs> we'll find out in a second. So let's just change my uh, find, push right, uh, justify self end, justify self end. And then here does a justify self of end. And that works. <laughs> Magic, right? Uh, if you want to know why you can't do this with Flexbox, but it does work with Grid, I'll link to a video down below or throw a card up there. Um, hopefully I don't forget any of the links this time. I do apologize for the previous ones that we're missing. Um, but yeah, in, in Grid, we can do that. Uh, and just looking here, let's just look actually in a bit more detail, but I have a feeling that is centered this way, which I didn't realize before. Um, if we come and look here, this is my CTA. This is what's throwing the grid on there is the even columns. So this really is, uh, some people did mention like using BEM sometimes can be a better approach or they would have preferred me using BEM for this type of thing compared to like mixing in utility classes and stuff like that. To me, this is where BEM sometimes you run into issues because I have the section of CTA. And then here, oh, I, I guess you could have like your CTA wrapper or something or CTA columns, but I need my container and then I need something in here that's creating columns. And I also need the, these columns to be aligned, like aligning my content vertically as well. So let's just do a vertical align center. And again, lots of people like short utility classes. I like just really explicit ones. So vertical align center, it does exactly what it says. So if somebody looks at this code, um, the most obscure ones might be, say, padding block 900, but things like vertical line center, I think, make sense. Uh, but again, this is how I name things. <laughs> it doesn't have to be how you go ahead and, and name things, right? So do, you know, take that into account. So uh, vertical align center, and then this could be a uh, align items of center. And you probably saw that shifted down a little bit when I did that. So that's perfect. These, I'm actually gonna take my even columns here and just move this up to here. <laughs> um, just because these guys sort of work with this a little bit because that's a display grid on there. I don't know, that's just me. Um, it's, oh, but then I also need to move this up because that goes with this. Perfect, okay. Um, 
So then we have the background images that we want to bring in. So because the background images are, I, and again, I'm saying background images, we could do it with pseudo elements. The problem is like, it's so different. Like the ones down here are very different from the ones up here in their positioning and everything. And even, I guess this could even be a background image in all honesty, but they're very unique. These, the way things are positioned is very different. There's not a lot that's going to be similar between the two areas. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to my, so there's my navigation. So my nav to me is like a bit more of like a component level thing um, or layout or whatever you want to call it. So I'm just going to come down here, do, 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 that's all my navigation. And we can do my CTA here, call to action. And so it was a dot CTA on that one. And you can see like right now, if I didn't have that background, this is one of the reasons I like utility classes is if I didn't have these background images on here, I wouldn't even need to have a class for this, right? Everything else is ready. The only thing that's different is that I need to add these little things in here. So it's one of the reasons I like that. You can do so much work that just, you know, I need a new element like this on another page or on this page that just has a different background, whatever it is. Well, I have it. I don't have to create new classes every time. And that's sort of the problem with them. And this is to me a bit of a hybrid. Anyway, I don't want to get into it too much. Just trying to defend myself a little bit. Um, and the approach that I'm taking here. Um, okay, so what do we want to do? We want to do CTA background image. And the fun thing here is we can put two background images. So URL, um, and then I'm just going to break this on a new line because it makes it easy to list them out. So my first background image will be in my, is it Im images? It is images. Um, I'm assuming we have an SVG for this. I might have to go look at my SVGs. Tablet pattern. Hmm. Let's go look. Uh, images and SVG previewer. That's not the right shape. Oh, that one looks better. Ah. Ooh, but it has the color. I guess we can use the same thing and can't use the same thing and drop the opacity though. BG tablet. I'll just make this a little bit bigger. Oh, I have the same BG tablet pattern I do. So that's sort of the shape that we want. But this raises a fun problem with background images. You can't add transparency to them. Okay. So ideally what I, I'm just trying to think right now, but I, I think ideally if you were given these assets and I'm, I'm doing this, assuming I'm getting these assets, maybe I don't have the Figma file. Ideally you just talk to your designer and be like, can I have the same thing, but with a lower opacity or, you know, you could change it yourself or whatever it is. Uh, I could bring them in as pseudo elements and I could just change the opacity of them then because they're in pseudo element. You can do what you want, or we could bring them in as a background image. Um, I th I'm going to do the background image one just because I think it's the most interesting way to do it and has the most learning potential. I don't know if it's really the most practical way to do it in this case. Um, but yeah, we're going to do it that way anyway, because uh, it can show you how you can lower the opacity of a background image in a way. We're going to cheat a little bit, but <laughs> at least we know which one it is. Um, so instead of CTA background image, I'm actually going to do a CTA before. It could be an after. It doesn't really matter in this case. Yeah, this should work. Uh, so CTA before, actually that does, we are gonna be using position absolute on it. So dot CTA is going to have a position of relative like that. Then my before is going to have a content of nothing because it's a pseudo element. Uh, we could, I guess, bring them in as content too, but I think that'd be more of a nightmare than anything else. And so if we do the, con the CTA before as the content, and then we wanna bring in a position absolute, position absolute. I don't know why my autocomplete's not on, but that's okay. Uh, position absolute and then inset of zero. Basically, I want this to cover my entire my entire CTA. Um, the biggest thing here that's going to be like the biggest, the hardest thing to do uh, with this is actually going to, oh, uh, okay. This will be more of the house clean. I don't know. We could, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I won't do the footer. Maybe this video is just going to be this one. Um, background image. So inset there, let's just throw a background on this for now, background of red. So we can know if it's actually existing. It looks like it's not existing. So let's go and take a look at why not. So it is there somewhere. Usually when you do this, it gives you a little pointer that shows you, even if it's like way, oh, ah, 
whoops, CTA position. There we go. Now it's in the right place. Perfect. So it's, it's where we want it to be. Uh, the thing is, I need it behind everything else, but in front of the background there. So one way we can do that is to give this a negative Z index. Uh, I like doing that when I declare my position. So Z index of negative one. The only problem then is it also goes behind the background color that we've set here. So that's not good. So we can come over back to my CTA and do an isolation isolate, which means that it can't actually escape outside of this element. So it can't go behind that. It's creating a new stacking context. I have talked about this before. So anyway, that's what it does. Creates a new stacking context, so things are stuck within there. Uh, there's other ways of creating new stacking context. Just this one, that's its actual purpose to do that. So my background red, we can get rid of that. And we can focus on our background image now. And as I said, we will have multiple one, but let's come in. Uh, and that was my BG tablet. Come on, what's going on here? Images, BG, there we go. BG tablet pattern. Let's hit save and there it is, perfect. So the reason that I'm doing this with a pseudo element just covering the entire space is because then on here, I can throw an opacity on here of like a 0.2 and we get sort of what we want, maybe even a 0.1. It looks pretty close, <laughs> so perfect. Now we just need to position it. So background image, then we can come in with my background position. And this is where things do get a little bit tricky when you're trying to get background images where you want them to be. Um, especially because most of what we have here is actually missing. Like, I think it's actually lining up. Oh, it's also repeating. Ha, there we go. We don't want it to repeat. Um, yeah, it'd be cool if we could actually take advantage of the repeat and like spread the repeat out or something like that, but we can't do that. So background uh, repeat of no repeat. And we're just going to do the first one and then we'll worry about getting the other ones in place. But right now, like, remember the shape of it? It's like this weird, it's like this, right? Um, so it's actually coming underneath here. Um, so it's actually positioned like all the way on the left right now. So if we do like negative 100%, it's going to go and zero. Negative 200%, too much. Negative 150 maybe. Was 100 okay? Maybe 100 is okay, but we do, it does change at smaller screens. Oh, uh, that mm, percentage is kind of awkward with these, as you can see. Uh, so maybe we just go with the pixel value. Uh, negative 20 rem. I said pixels, but that might be better because then it's going to sort of stay there, <laughs> whereas percentages are really awkward. Um, yeah, that should be fine. This one might actually work better if it was inside the container. But this one won't because it clearly goes outside. Well, oh. okay. For a background decoration, I've I've been mucking around with this a lot. I just came back to this, so I cut out everything else <laughs> that I was doing. Um, over here, though, we clearly also want it to be moved up a little bit because whoops. Right now, it is it's kind of low. You know, we want the top to be cut off. So here, we can also do like a negative ten rem or something. Um, maybe a bit less five. Um, there we go. So it's sort of coming in at that point. Uh, again, this is something that like you could talk to your design team about, but it really is a decoration. <laughs> so it's completely fine. But where the more interesting part now is, I think, is bringing in a second image. So here we have this um, image that's coming in, and then we can just put a comma and then bring in another URL and put the same one, which I don't know if they're probably overlapping each other right now. So background position, we do the same thing. And then this time we want to go that way and up. So that way, let's try like 50 rem, no, 30 rem and negative 30 rem maybe. And you can see it changed because it is there. Um, they're just there. We need to go a lot more than this. Let's try 100, um, which might look like too much. Oh, there it is. There it is. Not too bad. So you can see that this is my first background image. And that's my second one there. Uh, let's move it up more, negative, probably too much. That's where we were, 40. You could use pixels for this as well, obviously. Um, that would sort of fix things a little bit. So let's pull this in a little bit more. Right, right, not too bad. Um, move it up a smidgen, 45, 42. There we go. Something like that I think looks not too bad. We get that coming in. Uh, and the advantage with this is that one does just slide out and the other one stays in at smaller screen sizes. 
it's not going to look exactly like we have here. So you could throw a media query in to change how this looks. Uh, but I'm not going to bother in this case. But what we will do is fix this on mobile. Um, so we're going to do a text align center. And then here do my at media min width of 40, 40? I think it was 50, right? And we can do a um, CTA. There's a few things, obviously, we need the content to stack. We're going to do that as well. And we're definitely only going to do this in this video. And we won't do, we'll do the footer in a separate video because this is taking longer than I thought it would for such a simple thing. Uh, so text align center. Obviously, this is an issue. So we'll fix that at the same time as well. Um, so yeah, CTA, we can just take you dot CTA and say that the, whoops, I cut, I wanted to copy. Uh, and then the text align will be left. So that's okay. Now, the things that we do want to change here are when we're moving things around, which would be in my utility classes. Uh, one of the issues is we don't want it to be columns at small screen sizes, which I think is the same. Did we solve that up top? Oh, they do stack up here. So when does this stack? Oh, they are stacking. What am I talking about? That's perfect. Okay, that's okay. I was worried about that. That, I think, is actually breaking at a pretty good spot. We just want this to be centered here when it happens. Much less work than I thought. Perfect. And so the way we can do that is... The font size looks bigger here, too. But um, the way we can do that and get that in the middle is where I made my align center. Uh, and I guess this is one place you could argue that utility classes... and Building utility classes as you go is not always the most practical thing. Um, it's nice when you can just generate and have a whole bunch, whether you're generating them with Tailwind or generating them in another way, rather than just sort of slowly baking them and creating them and doing all of that. So that is where on a project like this, maybe it's not the most practical. But again, I'm doing this assuming the project would grow and grow and grow. Um, and I sort of wanted to introduce this idea. So we can keep this one if ever we need that for everything. But here we could do a vertical align center MD. Um, so just saying like from medium screen sizes and up. So if we do that, it just means it's inside my media query. Uh, min width of 50 M. Some people don't like this idea of having repeated media queries because they say it bloats the, you know, I have a media query here and the same media query here. Uh, they're one right after each other. I personally find this a lot easier for maintenance on a project. And once things are gzipped, which most servers do automatically on their end, uh, repeated code, it's not that big of a deal. Um, obviously, you can optimize things a little bit, but um, I'll, I'll link to a test I did that just shows how effective gzipping is when it comes to repeated media queries. Uh, so yeah, we have that. So then all we have to do is come over to here and vertical align center, medium, and <laughs> it doesn't work, uh, except <laughs> I did it for the wrong one. This should be here and not be that, but be, uh, I guess we can just copy all of this. <laughs> that should be this one. The joy of talking while you're coding is sometimes these things happen. Uh, uh, so over here, then we can change justify self and MD and it goes right in the middle. So there we go. Uh, let's just shrink that down and see what it looks like. And the font size looks different. Um, so this is my secondary heading. What, did I choose the wrong heading size? This one's also, oh, that's why. It's not the same as the other ones. Oh, it's the same as my primary heading. Interesting, because if I look in my Figma file, this is at 40 pixels, my secondary heading is at 30. Uh, which once again is, <laughs> let's go and see down here, we can close that. And right here it's just my font size primary heading and this is where i like things like this because here's on an h1 this makes sense but then we also want it on simplify how why can't we find that simplify there we go uh so here where it's just a regular paragraph i use my secondary but we can make that my primary heading font size which should link it up a little bit more to how it actually looked before um yeah perfect and obviously we can get a bit smaller than that. So there we go. That is that part done. In the next video, we'll tackle our footer. 
And since I've made my last video, I've had a few new enablers of awesome come on. So thank you very much to Jan, Johnny, Lucas, Mr. Dave, Patrick, Simon, and Tim for being my supporters of awesome, as well as all my other patrons over on Patreon. And yes, I did have to read that because I would have never been able to get everybody's name all at once. Um, but if you haven't yet subscribed and you're looking forward to the rest of the series, please do consider subscribing. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your court on the internet just a little bit more awesome.